Hello, and welcome to another episode of CUDA Casts. With CUDA 6, we're introducing one of the most dramatic programming model improvements in the history of the CUDA platform, Unified Memory. In this CUDA cast, we'll look at how Unified Memory simplifies memory management in GPU accelerated applications and how it enables sharing of complex data structures between CPU and GPU code. A release candidate of CUDA 6 is currently available to all developers. To get it, you can go to the developer.nvidia.com slash CUDA toolkit download site and click the CUDA R6 RC download link. In a typical PC or cluster node today, the memories of the CPU and GPU are physically distinct and separated by the PCI Express bus. Before CUDA 6, that is exactly how the programmer has to view things. Data that is shared between the CPU and GPU must be allocated in both memories and explicitly copied between them by the program. This adds a lot of complexity to GPU programs. Unified memory creates a pool of managed memory that is shared between the CPU and GPU, bridging the CPU-GPU divide. Managed memory is accessible to both the CPU and GPU using a single pointer. The key is that the system automatically migrates data allocated in unified memory between host and device so that it is accessible as CPU memory to code running on the CPU and as GPU memory to code running on the GPU. Unified memory lowers the bar of entry to parallel programming on the CUDA platform by making device memory management an optimization rather than a requirement so you can get straight to the task of developing CUDA parallel kernels. By migrating data on demand between the CPU and GPU, Unified Memory can offer the performance of local data on the GPU while providing the ease of use of globally shared data. The complexity of this functionality is kept under the covers of the CUDA driver and runtime, ensuring that application code is simpler to write. The point of migration is to achieve full bandwidth from each processor, the 250 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory is vital to feeding the compute throughput of a Kepler GPU. To demonstrate the benefits of unified memory, let's start with a simple example. In this code, we have a struct called data element that represents a name value pair with a string name and an integer value. In our main function, we instantiate a data element on the host, allocate space for the name string, and pass it to a function called launch and then print the value after the launch returns. In launch, we want to launch a kernel that accesses the data element on the device. To do that though, we have to allocate a device copy of the structure with these CUDA malics and pass that to the kernel launch. Because the structure contains a pointer to another location, we have to perform a so-called deep copy. This requires not one, not two, but three CUDA memcopy calls. First, to copy the structure and value. Second, to copy the contents of the name array. And third, to point the device structure's name pointer at the device copy of the name array. After the kernel runs on the device, we want to access the modified structure on the host, so we have to copy the updated name and value back to the CPU using the CUDA mem copies here. We then have to free our temporary device allocations with CUDA free. We can compile and run this example with the following commands. We can set our architecture target as SM35. And we'll run it. And we see that the name is modified with the D, and we've incremented our value as the kernel does here. Unified memory drastically simplifies deep copies and sharing data structures between host and device code, as this modified example shows. This program does the same thing with far less code, and we're going to see the same program using unified memory. Here's our main function. All we do is replace calls to malloc with calls to CUDA malloc managed, here and here, and calls to free with CUDA free. CUDA malloc manage allocates the data in the unified memory space so it is accessible via a single pointer from either host or device code. Once we have made this change, our launch function is trivial. It just launches the kernel. Note that on today's GPUs, unified memory provides coherence at kernel launches and device synchronization. So here we call CUDA device synchronize to make sure the GPU is done with the data element before the CPU reads it in its printf in main.
Unified memory requires at least a Compute Capability 3.0 device, such as a Tesla K10. And we're going to compile and run this on my K20 with the following commands. You see, with much less code, we get the same output. Now, Unified Memory really shines with C++ data structures. C++ allows new and delete memory management operators to be overloaded. This means that we can create a base class called Managed, as shown here. Managed implements a new operator that calls CUDA malloc manage, and a delete operator that calls CUDA free. We modified our data element struct to inherit from the Managed class. With this change, now we can create a data element struct using new, and it uses the CUDA malloc managed automatically. Let's compile and run this version to make sure it works the same. You see we again get the same result. We can take this a step further. Let's create a string class that uses unified memory. We have our original managed class here. Now we're gonna create the string class. Here you can see that I've created a simple string class that uses CUDA malloc manage to allocate its data. This is done in the realloc private function. And we use CUDA free to delete it in the destructor. Note that the string also must inherit manage so that an object itself is allocated in unified memory. Also note that we provide a constructor that takes a constant care pointer initializer, as well as a copy constructor, and an assignment operator. These make it easy to initialize and copy strings. We can now redefine our data element structure to use a string object rather than a character array. Because we defined an assignment operator, we can just assign the value of the string rather than allocating the space in main as before. Also, because we defined a copy constructor, we can pass the structure either by reference or by value. Passing by value invokes the copy constructor to create a new copy accessible to the device. The sample now demonstrates calling the kernel and passing the structure in three ways. By pointer, by reference, which is also a new CUDA 6 capability, and by value. And each of these functions simply calls the kernel with the element value and then synchronizes. Let's compile and run it. Now when we run this program, we see outputs from each run of the kernel. Notice that the third call did not modify the output from the second call because we passed by value and the kernel modified a temporary copy of the data structure. These examples demonstrate what a powerful feature unified memory is and how dramatically it can change how you developed CUDA software, especially when it comes to sharing data structures between host and device code. Try out unified memory today with the CUDA 6 release candidate. Thanks for watching this episode of CUDAcasts.